In this video, we want to take an example of a population model using a system, figure out what kind of interaction that we have between these two species, and then figure out what's going to happen over time to the populations if they follow this system. So we have our model here. The x dt is x times 3 minus x minus y. dy dt is y times 5 minus y minus 2x. First, expand out these equations. So if I expand this out, I can rewrite the equations as dx dt is x times 3 minus x, and then minus xy. And dy dt is y times 5 minus y, and then minus 2xy. So this setup shows that we have logistic growth for each population, and a negative interaction term in both cases. So that tells me we're in a competing species situation. They're fighting for resources, they're fighting for anything in the environment, because the population of each of them decreases the rate at which the other one grows. Now, let's first analyze this via equilibrium solutions, see what that looks like, and then look at null clines, put it all together. So we can start by setting both of these derivative equations equal to zero. We'll have dx dt equals zero, which is x times three minus x minus y, and we have dy dt equals zero, which is y times five minus y minus two x. For dx dt, this is zero when x equals zero, or 3 minus x minus y equals 0. For dy dt it's 0 when y equals 0, or when 5 minus y minus 2x equals 0. We want these both to be true to get equilibrium solutions. We'll use these equations for our null clines later on. So from this we see that our equilibrium solutions here are at 0 comma 0. We have 0 for x which means y is 5. If we have 0 for y that means x is 3. And then we have these two equations here which this one here tells me that y equals three minus x. I can plug that in over here to get five minus three minus x minus two x equals zero. This is two minus x equals zero or x equals two. And so y is one. So these are our four equilibrium solutions that we have for this problem. Now I want to classify them using the Jacobian matrix. So we have f and g written right up here above. Here is f and here is g. So then we can write the Jacobian as partial f partial x. So a three minus x minus y minus x. Df dy is a minus x. Dg dx is a minus two y. And dg dy is a five minus y minus two x and then minus y. Simplifying this out, we get that our j of x y here is three minus two x minus y, negative x, negative two y, five minus two y minus two x. And now we can plug in our equilibrium solutions and see what that gives us. So j at zero, zero is going to be three, zero, zero, and five. That's gonna be a nodal source because the eigenvalues are three and five, and so it's unstable. We then have zero and five, x is 0, y is 5, will be negative 2, 0, negative 10, negative 10. This is triangular, so the eigenvalue is going to be minus 2 and negative 10. This will be a nodal sink, and so asymptotically stable. We have 3, 0, which is minus 3, minus 3, 0, and minus 1, which is triangular again. Its eigenvalue is minus 3 and minus 1, so it's again a nodal sink, but asymptotically stable. And then finally, the point in the middle at 2 comma 1, which comes out to be 3 minus 4 minus 1 is negative 2, negative 2, that's negative 2, 5 minus 2 minus 4 is negative 1. We can then look for eigenvalues and eigenvectors here. It's not triangular, so it's not super easy, but we can still do it. This comes out to be negative 2 minus lambda, negative 1 minus lambda minus four, that's three negative signs. The lambda squared plus lambda plus two lambda is plus three lambda plus two minus four. So it's lambda squared plus three lambda minus two. That's not gonna factor, but I can find the eigenvalues with the drag formula, which tells me that lambda equals negative three plus or minus the square root of nine plus four AC is eight over two that's gonna be a saddle because those are gonna have opposite signs so it's gonna be unstable. Now we can go ahead and plot all of these. 
We had a nodal source at zero, zero with eigenvalues in the coordinate directions. Looks like that. We have a nodal sink at zero, five and three, zero. So zero, five and three, zero. And then we had a saddle at two comma one. And we don't know the eigenvectors here, but we can just kind of estimate with sort of generic eigenvectors, those ones going out, these ones coming in. And you can see what's kind of going to happen here. This is now unstable, and the nodal sinks are here and here. So that basically says no matter where I start the population, it's going to funnel into one of those two points as time goes on. So if I start somewhere up here, like in this region, I'm going to funnel my way in towards that solution. If I start instead up here, I'm going to funnel up towards this one. So we can determine from this based on the fact that we have a saddle in the middle and the sinks on the outsides is that over time, one of these populations will die off because the other one will outcompete it for the resources. Now, which one dies off depends on the initial condition, right? If I start very near this one over here, there's no way it's going to run all the way over to this one, right? It's going to stick here and it's going to come in to this point here and same thing starting nearby here. Where you really see what's going on, you have to actually plot out the nonlinear system, but you'd get a separatrix here. You would get a solution that comes out of this saddle point, sort of off in this direction somewhere, and similarly one that comes out here and ends up sort of in the source here somewhere, where if you start below this line, you will converge into this solution here where the red species lives and the other one dies off. And if you start above this line, you're gonna converge over here to where the pink one is, which is the X species dying out and the Y one surviving. So which one depends on the initial condition. So unlike a linear system where if there is a sink, everything goes to it, in this case, because I have two sinks and a saddle in between them, it sort of cuts the plane in half. And this can go either way depending on where they start. The important factors know that in a case like this, the overall outcome, as in which species will die off, can depend on initial condition. It can depend on where you start to get to this point. Now, as a final approach, look at some null clients for the same problem to see how that factors into the, into the situation. So we'll bring down the equations from before. Now we can draw on these null clients. So x equals zero is the y-axis. And y equals three minus x hits at three and three, like this. y equals zero is the x-axis. And five minus two x hits at five up here and five halves down here. As expected, we see four equilibrium solutions where the purple and orange lines cross, one up here at zero, five, one at the origin, one over here at three, zero, and then the crossing point here, which will be at two comma one. Let's look at directionality for this. And this, we need the actual equations to know what the sign's gonna be. So in this bottom quadrant here, we're at say the point one, one, that'll be in this region because it'll be somewhere right over here. And at one, one, this is positive, and this is positive. So we have both rows as positive. That's going up this way. If I plug in like 10, 10, so that's gonna be way up here somewhere, we'll see positive times negative and positive times negative. That's gonna be two negatives coming in this way. Now the key trick could be what happens in the two side regions, because this will be the case no matter if we have something in the middle they converge to or something that they diverge away from to the sinks on the side. If I check up in this region here, we can be at say one comma three will put us there. So for one comma three, this is negative because I have one times three minus one minus three is negative. But at one comma three, actually on the line here, but this will stay positive. So in this case here, X switches signs. And so this is going up and out. And the same thing happens down here at the bottom. You can also process it via which line you cross in the sense that when I cross the orange line, my horizontal direction should flip. So I should go from going right to going left and same thing crossing the purple line down here. So in those cases, we can see that the point is these two arrows are going away from the center, not towards it. That's indicated by the null clients, by the fact that it's a saddle here, so it's unstable. Think by the fact that these points here are sinks and not saddles like they would be for the other case. So all those facts are going to indicate that for this situation, 
we cannot have a coexistent equilibrium. Or in a more mathematical context, that solution where the equilibrium would be is unstable. So it's not going to be something we converge to. It's something that if we're nearby, we're running away from it to get to one of the other points. So there is the analysis of the system for competing species where the center point that you get in the both populations positive situation is unstable. So it's a situation where you do not have an equilibrium solution that is stable for coexistence. Basically means that over time, these will all compete and one of them will die off depending on where populations start. There's the analysis via linearization and stability analysis and analysis via null counts for the same problem to see how all these work together gives a good picture of what's going on with this system as time goes on.